Hi everyone, we are so happy to be here at the ALT Annual Conference 2022. And our talk today is titled Post-Pandemic Video, Finding the Niche and Filling the Gap. My name is Grania McGrath and I work in the Centre for Learning and Teaching um, and I'm a member of the Learning Technologies team here. And I'm Blonneth McSherry, so I'm on the Learning Techs team too. And between us, we run and manage this studio facility on campus. But what is our campus? <laughs> Good question. Um, so up until recently, we were called the National University of Ireland Galway. Um, but in the last week, um, we have been completely rebranded and have a new identity. As of September 1st, we are now the University of Galway, also called the Galiva, because we're a bilang bilingual institution even, and we're based in the west of Ireland. Yeah, so that's hot off the presses, our exciting <laughs> news here. Um, so today's talk, what we want to do is explore how we used video pre-pandemic, um, what we do now that's different and how our studio space has allowed us to do that. We will explore how we work with colleagues, um, how we manage the production process from planning through to post-production. And hopefully we'll share a few tips and ideas about what's worked and what hasn't worked and what challenges we've had. And perhaps there might be um, a few snippets that you can share and learn from and um, apply to your own context. For a little bit of background on the studio, um, just to let you know that the studio um, that we're talking about today has been around for 20 years. Um, and then I suppose in the last three years, we've had a complete refurbishment, a cre complete overhaul of the physical space and the technology within the studio. And we did this in collaboration with our Department of Journalism. So if we head back three years... Um 2020, start of 2020, we had this new space. We had it as a collaboration. We were ready to go. We'd been trained. So exciting. Um, and we all know what happens next. Um, we had COVID. So we were off campus, I guess, nearly a year and a half. Then this time last year, pretty much exactly, we were already excited again. Take two, off we go into the studio. Um, two weeks into term, we had a big cyber attack on campus. So everything was down. We had no network, no access to our systems. And this had a huge effect on the studio because cameras are networked um, between our control room and our recording space. That's how all of the communication occurs. Um, so... It was not until the end of the year, start of 2022, that we were really in a position to get back on campus. But there's always a silver lining and we have taken this as an opportunity to re-examine our role promoting and facilitating the production of in-house video, guided by good pedagogic practices and strong production values. So really, I guess the structure that we have now is we think of our um, recordings on campus as um, with three levels, really. So we have our level one recording. So that might be basic lecture capture, simple teaching aids, student assessments. These are managed locally by lecturing staff. Um, then we have level two recordings, as we say. So that might be a video content within reusable e-learning materials, lessons, might be um, simple promotional videos or research dissemination um, that do require the input of a learning technologist. And these are managed at the college level, which has only really been possible because of the recruitment of additional colleagues. Then thirdly, um, we have our level three recording. So that's where we come in and where the studio comes in. So these are high profile, high impact type of recordings where um, it's really important that the output would be really high end. You need that strong production values and that it's worth putting in the work that that requires. Let's take a quick tour of the studio. So we have two rooms within the studio, the control room and the recording room or the studio floor, as we call it. The control room is where we facilitate the recordings, and there are a few key pieces of technology in here. We have the TC1 TriCaster, and this is our vision mixer, our studio in a box, um, where we can control the cameras and bring in lots of different content. We also have the lighting desk, where we can control the lighting that is ceiling mounted on the studio floor, and also the LED lighting behind the silk backdrop. We have our machine that we can upload our script to and that links to our autoprompter on the studio floor. And we have our audio desk. In the recording room or the studio floor, we have a number of different areas that we kind of think of as broken down into zones. Uh, we have the news desk zone. We have the green screen zone. We have the e-glass zone. 
And we also have the ceiling imaging camera, which is a wolf vision camera. We also have a roadcaster, and this is an all-in-one audio solution for recording podcasts and audio. So that's that's a tour of the studio. Um, so I guess the next thing that we will chat to you quickly about is how has it all worked? What's worked, what's not, challenges and, and tips and what's next with us? Yeah, so let's start with some positive things. So I suppose from the tour, you'll have noticed that we have a whole load of new technology and that's been the biggest change for us to have this great technology and equipment that's meant that we're able to give a much, much better output. It's, of course, been a challenge to upscale and get to know all of this equipment, but it's certainly meant that we can offer a much, much better quality content and output to our colleagues who who are working with us. It's given us lots more options. So as Lorna mentioned earlier, we're really, really open to trying new things. But these options come with, you know, a bit of thought and also some of them work and some of them don't work. Um, another positive thing is that we've found that we've both had a really big appetite to come back so we've told you about the things that have held us back and similar to yourselves I suppose it just meant we really really when we came back wanted to get going we really were ready to to start the studio and make sure everything went well and that appetite came from both sides our colleagues who started to come into us with queries on how they could use the studio they were really really enthusiastic and really really wanted to get going too and you know the new equipment the new space they were really 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 happy to see this and excited and it stirred up lots of new ideas for them. Yeah, and this is a fun space to work. We enjoy it. You know, it's interesting projects and, and everything is new and it's it's always different. So we were, we were really happy to get back. Um, but of course, there's been challenges along the way. A few of them we've mentioned. We've had COVID. We've had the cyber attack. One of the other big challenges has been um, there's so many systems in here um, that it's been a really steep learning curve, I would say, technically. And we would both be very used to learning new systems and working with lots of types of systems. But this has been um, so much to learn (laughs) and pretty quickly too. um, You know, we might have a staff member who has um, a fully new type of scenario and we need to figure out how how to do everything. Um, But yeah, lots to learn, but it's great. Um, Yeah, I would say so. And, And that in itself just meant managing our time because we've become more dedicated to the studio. So because it's been completely overhauled, it isn't something that we can come and go from. We really need to devote, you know, time to it. We schedule the days that we're in, the days that we're not. We work on our workflows to ensure that we can get from the planning stage to the the post-production stage. So we could be in here for for a day or two recording, but we really need to know that if staff have a deadline, if there's a course or a module that needs that content, we need to ensure that we can get to the post-production stage for a finished piece of content for that um, module. Yeah, we've also really tried to work, and this is ongoing, I guess, on policies and procedures. Um, so, um, yeah, how best to do things, um, the planning process, the post-production process, so that we can work together with staff and they understand when they should use the studio, how it works, and so that expectations are set um, in a manageable way on both ends. Um, so a few tips we might want to pass on to you. Um So firstly, really important to know when to use the studio, when you can do things at home and when to advise staff either way and to manage that. Um, Secondly, I guess the importance of of planning. Um, That's huge. And again, that staff will recognise that this is not a you book it, you're in on the day and you leave and that's all there is to it. That it's a process and the better planning that um, there is, the better outcome and better output that they will have. And again, I guess linked into this is, is scripting. We used to not have an auto prompter in our old studio, but we have here, certainly with the shorter type of recordings, having a script, I think, and I think we both think has been really, really useful Um to get that professional output um, that we all want. Yeah, I think so. I suppose the script is a new thing so that we fact that we ensure and we try to really strongly encourage the staff to do that. So it's meant that before staff come to the studio, a number of things might have happened. We've shared with them the things that we'd like to get from them before they come. We've shared guidelines, what not to wear, what to wear. Um, And also another thing that we found really works well for us is that we've offered them to come in for a tour. So this is nice because we've all been, you know, working from home for so long and there's colleagues that we haven't met in ages. So 
the tour is a chance to, I suppose, meet each other in person, which is exciting in itself. But also it um, that expectation piece is met again. The staff are in here. They're not saying to a school, can you explain to me what a green screen is? We're standing in front of the green screen. We can turn on the tech, you know, we can show them a little bit about how a background works and we can have a chat with them. Um, and as Blon had said, we both really enjoy this. It's fun for us. So having met them in advance, you know, it makes it easier on the recording day too. Obviously, it takes a little bit of time, but I think building it in in the long run makes um, things much easier and run much more smoothly for us in the studio. Yeah, I think two last tips. Um, Firstly, post-production takes time and um, you need to you need to manage that. So we need to let our staff know and know what's their deadline. How will that work? How will we fit the post-production in? We can't do 20 recordings a week and turn around the 20 um, the 20 finished files in the week, too. So that's try, though. (laughs) You can try. Um, and then our last tip is um, to try new to try new things and not be scared of it. Um, so if a staff comes with an, an idea, we're no idea how to do it. <laughs> we try and figure it out and we try and stretch ourselves in here so that we can get really good outputs and, and use new tech in, in ways that we might not have thought of and, and not to be not to be scared of that, not to not to stick with what we know, but to, to really stretch our, our goals in here. If you have any questions, we'd be so happy to answer them. Um, We'll share our our contact details. um, And if anyone wants to get in touch with us, if you have feedback, if you you might be working on a refurb of your studio, you have any further questions about any of the tech, um, we'd be so happy to hear from you. It's great to share and um, it's great to learn from each other.